I'm talking and nobody can hear me. Go ahead and mute yourself. We are getting started tonight. Welcome everybody that's on. Welcome those of you that are on Facebook. I'm going to stop this. Um, it's good to have everybody on tonight. Um, Pastor Douglas is getting ready. He's going to be speaking tonight. Once again, I am excited to be here tonight. I'm going to share a scripture, and then we are going to get started. Make sure that you do mute yourself when you come in tonight. Excited to have all of my Facebook friends as well. I'm going to share a scripture with you tonight, and it's going to be in Zechariah uh, 4 and 5. And it's similar to the song that, um, that was just playing. And it says, then, the, if you have opportunity, go back and read this. But once again, it's in Zechariah 4 and 5. And I'm going to read a little bit of it. It says, then the angel that talked with me answered and said, do you not know what these things are? And I said, no, my Lord. Then he answered and spoke to me, saying, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, saying, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Then verse seven, and this has become one of my favorite scriptures. It says, who, then they, the prophet begins to say to the mountain, who are you, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? You shall become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with the sayings, grace, grace to it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundations of this house. His hands shall also finish it, and you shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. Then in 10 it says, and this is uh, very familiar, For who has despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel. And so when I'm saying Zerubbabel, you need to consider your name. For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Elder Sonia or Shante with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord which run to and fro to the whole earth. So we're going to pray, but I want to lift up and go back to this right here. And I want you to put your name right here. He says, then, um, in, in verse 7, who are you? need to tell your mountains tonight. Who are you, great mountain, that you will not bow down? You need to tell your mountains tonight, according to Zechariah 4 and 7, that your mountains will become as a plain that you need to say to your mountains, grace, grace. The Bible says that we can speak to the mountain to be thy removed and cast into the sea. And if we don't doubt that it will be cast into the sea. And so tonight, that's what I want you to say. I want you to begin to say to your mountain, who are you, great mountain, that you will not bow down? Can you put that in the chat tonight? Who are you, Great Mountain, that you will not bow down? I don't know what your mountain is tonight on Facebook and even on Zoom, but I want if you have a mountain that you're dealing with in your life right now, I want you to put that in the chat. What is that mountain that you are speaking to? Because according to Zechariah 4 and 7, we declare to every mountain in your life tonight that it will become a plain. The song says, who are you, great mountain, that you will not bow down? And then it begins to say that our God, that he's never lost that he has never lost, he has never lost, and he never will. 
The scripture begins, the psalmist begins to say, and he never will, and he never will. Our God tonight will not lose tonight. So let's pray. I want you to put the mountains that you may be dealing with tonight, and we're going to speak to those mountains tonight, and we believe that who are you, great mountain, that you will not bow down? that before us tonight, you will become a plane. Do you know what a plane is? It's a level, it's level ground. And that is what the Lord is saying to you and over Facebook, over Zoom tonight, that the things that you're going through, that it is going to become a plane. So let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight and we thank you, God, tonight for who you are in the midst of us. You said that where two or three are gathered in your name, that you would be in the midst of us. And so, Father, tonight we believe you to be in the midst of us, that we speak to our mountain to be thy removed and cast into the sea. And Father, tonight we will not doubt, but we believe your word because your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. And so, Father, tonight we believe your word, that we believe the report of the Lord. And the report of the Lord says about us that we are healed. The report of the Lord says that we are free tonight, that we are delivered, that we are overcomers, that we are more than conquerors. So tonight we believe the report of the Lord over our health, in our finances, over our children. We believe the report of the Lord. Can you just praise him tonight? Can you praise him tonight? Because the scripture says that he always calls us up to triumph. And so that we're going to triumph over Corona, over the economy. We declare about ourselves tonight that even in famine we shall eat, that I've been young and now I'm older, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg for bread that we will not beg for bread, even in this season, even in the midst of this pandemic. Father, because we call upon you tonight, we speak well of you. We make your name great in the earth. Father, we love you tonight and we believe your word tonight. God, we thank you tonight in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need to shout tonight. You need to bless him for that word, for the word that's going to come forth. You need to bless him tonight because he's a good, good father. It does not matter what it looks like. He is a good, good father. He is a good, good father. Who are you? And that is my favorite scripture. Who are you, great mountain, that you will not bow down? I thank you, God, tonight that mountains are bowing down before you. Mountains are bowing down before you tonight. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Once again, welcome everybody. Welcome those of you that are coming in by uh, Facebook and on in the Zoom room tonight. We are excited. I have just a couple of announcements tonight. And make sure that you mute your phone as you come in. Um, that uh, remember, School of Dreams is this Saturday. It's going to be amazing. Elder Cheryl Singletary is going to be our guest facilitator for that. If you float in the in the area of dreams, are you just interested? You need to go ahead and register for that. We're excited about that. Um, and, and I think that's all. And I'm going to bring Pastor Don on. I think that's all I have right now in way of an annou of announcements. But Pastor Don, we are bringing you on. Praise God. Hey, how's everybody doing? It's so good to see y'all again uh, tonight. And uh, uh, again, I want to say tonight uh, to uh, Prophet Carla, uh, thank you so much for allowing me to uh, uh, to be on on this um, this platform, and uh, it's just so amazing what um, uh, what technology has allowed us to do. 
um, how we're able to speak to so many people and um, um, in times that, that we are actually have not been able to get together. So the work of the gospel and the work of the ministry can still go on to some extent. And um, tonight, uh, tonight, I think I'm going to be very brief with you. Uh, I have some scriptures that I want to give to you, and I believe that um, I believe that the Word of God is life changing. The Bible says about His Word that it never returns void; that it accomplishes the thing whereunto uh, He sends it. So we believe that the things that will be said tonight are purposed from the Lord; that uh, that it is God's desire uh, that they be said uh, tonight, and that uh, by those things you will be you'll be changed. And so uh, tonight, if you've got your, uh, you got your Bible, turn with me over to the book of Genesis chapter 28, uh, the book of Genesis chapter 28. And, um, and I'm going to just quote to you a scripture real quickly out of Luke chapter 18. Uh, and it says this in uh, chapter, uh, Luke chapter uh, 18, verse number one, and Jesus spake a parable to them uh, to this end, that men ought always to pray and not faint or not give up, uh, not cave in, not quit. Um, and there is a insinuation in the scripture that, uh, that, that there would be such a weight on people sometimes that, and they don't see what it is that they're praying for coming to pass and uh, that they are, you know, kind of, uh, kind of upset, uh, you know, because they haven't seen the, the, the prayer that they've been praying um, manifest yet. And then what happens is that because of that, people begin to give up. People begin to quit. They say, well, you know what? This prayer thing does not work. And so the scripture declares, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So we need to remember in this hour that if you don't quit, if you don't stop, if you don't cave in, if you don't give up, that you'll see the manifestation of the thing that you've been praying about. One of the things that um, I wanted to say tonight, and one of the things that I believe that's important for us to understand tonight, is the fact that, um, that many times people give up and people quit in prayer because, um, because they don't understand or they, they, they believe that their prayers are not being heard. They believe that God is not in the midst of them. And because of that, you know, they cave in. And so uh, in, uh, in Genesis chapter uh, 28, Genesis chapter 28, verse number 16, it says this. It says, when Jacob woke up and he was en route to go to his, uh, to Padam Aram, to actually to find a wife. And so uh, the, when he was camped out, uh, there was an experience that actually happened to him. It says, and, and, it's in, and it begins in verse number 16. It says, when Jacob woke up, he thought, surely the Lord is in this place, and I was unaware of it. Now, marking your Bibles, I was unaware of it. And he was afraid and said, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. And so, uh, so while he is en route to go find his wife, uh, you know the story, a ladder lets down out of heaven and he wakes up and angels were ascending and descending before him. And in the midst of all that, God looks over out of the window that's open in heaven and begins to speak to him in the place that he is. Now, when he wakes up, he says something crazy to me. He says, he says, he says, surely the Lord was in this place and I was unaware of it. So, so with all that was going on, something in him did not recognize the fact that the Lord was actually right there before him. And so the word that they use, this word unaware, it means this. It means that he did not perceive it. He did not discern it. He did not acknowledge it. So I'm gonna say that one more time. This word unaware, it means this. It means that he did not perceive it. He did not uh, discern it. He did not 
acknowledge it. So now sometimes our house is, uh, our house has a garage on one side and then our bedroom is on, on the opposite side of the house. And uh, sometimes I can come into the garage or I can come into our house and, uh, and my wife uh, won't even know that I'm in the house. I can be in the kitchen. I'll be, you know, working on things in the kitchen. I might start cooking or whatever. And sometimes I, I, I can be in the house for 30 minutes. And then when I go back into the room, she'll be frightened at the fact that I came through and the fact that, but she didn't know that I was there for 30 minutes. She did not perceive it. She did not discern that I was in the house. She did not understand that my presence was here in the house. And so the word perceived actually has to do with a sensing the fact in the natural that something is happening around us. The word discern actually means uh, it, it has a spiritual connotation that we, we recognize that something is happening spiritually. And, that, and so uh, this, this word unaware, it incorporates both of those. And it's saying, listen, the law was here in the presence of me, of me, or I was in the presence of the law. And you know what? I didn't even know that God was in the place. And so what I found out sometimes is that God can be there, right there before us in our prayer time, and we not recognize the fact that God's there. Have you ever heard prayer? people say this, man, I was praying and it just seemed like that my prayers just hit the ceiling and, you know, and they didn't go any further than the ceiling. Or, you know what, I just don't know if I got a prayer through, you know, and, and, and that kind of conversation lets us know that we think that God is way off somewhere in heaven while we are in our prayer time. But I want you to know tonight that God is right there. When you start praying, that God is right there in the midst of you. That God is in your midst. When you begin to pray, uh, when I came into this place tonight, when my wife came into that place to, to this place tonight, the Lord was with her when she came. And one of the things that I want you to understand, and I want to make sure that we make clear tonight, is that God is with you. So remember on last week or either before, the week before, we said that God was omniscient. We said that God was omnipotent. And then we said that God was omnipresent, emphasizing that his divine power, uh, that he is, a div is his divine being is present everywhere at the same time as though it, it is all enveloping. So at your house right now, guess what? The Lord is there at your house. Here at our house, guess what? The Lord is at our house. Uh, over at Sonia, uh, Sonia Cruz's house, the Lord is there at the house. Why is he there? Because he is omnipresent. He is everywhere at the same time. And so one of the things that we need to understand is that when the presence of the Lord is there, it is accompanied by his power and his might. That, so that when you begin to pray that God is there, but not only is God there, his power and his might is there also. And so in Judges chapter 6, in Judges chapter 6, verse number 13, listen at what it says. And, and, and Gideon said unto him, so the angel is appeared unto Gideon. They're having a hard time with the Midianites. The Midianites have been coming in and attacking them. And it just seems like that, that you know, that, that with all that is going on, that God is not there. And so Gideon said unto the angel, oh, my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all of this happened to us? And if he is with us, where in the world are all his miracles? So that Gideon understands something about God, that if God is there, right, then his power will be there. His miracles will be there. He, 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 that he will be doing something in the midst of us. But, but what happens to us sometimes is that we have adopted so many religious ideas that we begin to think that God is way off somewhere away from us 
and that when we're praying, that God does not hear the prayer that we have prayed. So John chapter first John, turn over to first John, first John, first John chapter five, first John chapter five. And I uh, 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 and I, I know I'm giving you a lot of scripture, but just kind of hang in there with me tonight. I'm going somewhere up in this place tonight. John, first John chapter five. Listen to what it says in first John chapter five, verse number 14. It says, and this is the confidence that we have before him. Now underline that, if you will, underline the word before him. It's, 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 uh, uh, it's insinuating that when, uh, that when I go somewhere, that when I, when I begin to pray, when I begin to speak, that God is right there before me. That, that I don't have to, I don't have to, uh, I don't have to wait till my prayers go into heaven. That when I speak, when my mouth open, God hears my prayers. Why? Because God is right here with me. So listen to what it says. And this is the confidence that we have before him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Now I want you to underline that. So I'm before him. And then the next thing says, that he hears me when I pray. And we know that if he hears us, then we have the petition that we, then we, we know that if he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have whatever, we know that our, I'm sorry, let me go back. Uh, and if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know we already possess what we have asked of him. I think King James says, we have the petition that we've desired of him. So if we know he hears us, right, then we know that we have the petition. And so what we find out about some people is that they don't know, uh, they don't really understand, or they really have not perceived the fact that God hears their prayers that God hears their prayers, that he's right there before them, that when they open their mouth and they begin to pray, that God hears their, sp their prayers and that they have the petition that they've desired of the Lord. And so there's a, there's a religious mindset that people have adopted and they've, uh, some of it is adopted from scripture uh, and, and, uh, and, you know, the scripture over in Daniel, the 10th chapter, when Daniel began to pray and then uh, his prayers went up to heaven, that scripture actually says this, that the moment that you begin to pray, your prayers were heard, Daniel. So the minute that Daniel began to pray, God heard his prayer. And then the answer that God wanted to give to Daniel was actually sent to Daniel, but they were held up in the heavenlies. So what I want you to understand is that, uh, is that God hears your prayers when you pray, and that and that and that that the answer that God uh, has for you will begin to come immediately. But you and I have to shift our thinking from uh, from my prayers are having to travel from where I am all the way into heaven. And to begin to think that when I begin to talk, that God is right here in the room with me and he hears my prayers. So he don't have to, my prayers don't have to, you know, I don't have to bombard heaven because the Lord is right here. I don't have to, I don't have to uh, send up timber because the Lord is right here. I don't have to, I don't have to pray, you know, and hope that God hears me in heaven. Why? Because God is right here with me. All right. So uh, turn with me, turn with me, turn with me over to uh, Matthew chapter 28, Matthew chapter 28. And so what happens, the process of prayer is this, write these things down. The process of prayer is this, there is a need, there is a need. Now you begin to recognize that need, whether that need be in, in your life or whether that need is in the body of Christ or whether that need is for a loved one, or whether that need is for this world, there is a need and you recognize that need. Number two is 
I'm talking about the process of prayer. Number two is that when you recognize that need, you begin to pray over that need. That you say, oh my God, uh, you know, the, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much, so I'm going to begin to pray about this thing. So number one was that there is a need. Number two is that you begin to pray. Number three is that after you've prayed, you move in faith, right? Uh, uh, after that word, after, the, after you've prayed what it is that you need, you begin to move in faith on the thing that you prayed about. And then number four is the manifestation of that prayer. Now, the problem is with this process is that if you don't believe that God has heard your prayer, right, then you won't move in faith. And so what the holdup is or what the blockage is are the things that the thing, one of the things that's keeping many prayers from being answered is the fact that people don't believe that God is hearing their prayer. I wrote this down. If you don't think that God hasn't, hasn't heard your prayers, it cuts off the process of faith. You need to be able to say, I know God heard me, and therefore, because I know that God heard me, I'm going to begin to take some steps of faith. All right? So Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28. I want you to get this. I want you to get this. Matthew 28. Are you there? Amen. Shake your head. Wave your hand. Say amen or something. Amen. So Matthew chapter 28, verse number 20. Listen at what it says. Now, what I'm trying to establish and what I want you to know, understand right now, is that God is with you, right? When you open your mouth, he hears you. And I need for you to understand that not only is he seeing or uh, he hearing, he seeing the good things that you do, but he's seeing the crazy stuff that you do. When you cuss somebody out on the on the uh, on the uh, on the road, or you got road rage going on as you travel down the highway, guess what? The Lord is right there. When you're rude to somebody at your job, guess what? God is right there. You are in the presence of the Lord all the time. The Bible says that when two or three of y'all are gathered together, guess what? He is in the midst of you. Jesus in John chapter 14 says. That, that he is in you, uh, he is with you, and shall be in you. So one of the things that you need to establish in your mind, that God is with me, that God is with me. All right, so Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter 28, verse number 20, uh, verse number 19. Can I start at 19? Y'all are so awesome. Listen to what it says. It says, go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them, in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. It says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. So God is with you. So when you pray, right? It's just something, something real simple. When you pray that because God is with you, he hears your prayer. Zephaniah, Zephaniah, turn over to Zephaniah 3 and 17. Zephaniah 3 and 17. It's a small book in the Bible. Zephaniah is a real small book in the Bible. I'm going to help you out just a little bit. It's on page 961 in my Bible. Amen. Oh, now I'm going to wait till you get there. Zephaniah, Zephaniah chapter 3. Zephaniah chapter 3. Page 961. Uh, Zephaniah chapter 3, verse number, verse number 17. Now the Lord thy God is in the midst of thee. Y'all see that? Uh, the Lord thy God is in the midst of thee. Is mighty. He will save he will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. And so what you need to understand is that God is with you, that God is in the midst of you. God is at your house. God is at my house. He is omnipresent. I can get away from God. David even said it like this. 
Where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to the mountaintops, you're there. If I make my bed in hell, God, you're there. And so what you need to understand is that God is with you. Turn over to Romans chapter, Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Amen. Romans chapter 8. God is with you. You should have told your, you should have told your neighbor. Uh, God is with me, man. God is with me. God is with you. God is with you. So, uh, so uh, in Romans chapter 8, verse number 38, Romans 8 and 38. Now listen to what it says. It says, for I am persuaded that neither death no life, no angels, no principalities, no powers, no things present, no things to come, no heights, no depths, no any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So not only is he with us, but he loves us. And you need to know that when we pray, that we have the petition that we've desired of him. So well, what happens? What happens? Jesus said this. Jesus said to the, to the Pharisees, he says that your traditions, your traditions have made the word of God of no effect, right? Uh, he uses the word paradosis. It is the word, the instructions that you've seen, you've received, right? It is, it is the conversation. It is uh, the instructions that you've received that have been handed down or passed down from generation to generation. So when things are supposed to cause an effect in your life, what Jesus says is that we're not really operating with the way that the scripture tells us to operate, right? Out of an understanding from the scripture, we're a lot of times operating from what we've been taught in places that we have been. And he says that your tradition, that teaching, those things that you've heard, they've made the word of God of no effect. So, so, so when we hear stuff like, you know what? I'm bombarding heaven with my prayers, right? We're thinking that, that, that God in heaven has to hear our prayers because he's not right here with us. And what I want you to understand tonight is that when you sit at the table, to, to pray, to read your Bible, to whatever it is that you're doing at your table, God is right there with you. All right? Let's look at Revelations, the book of Revelations. And so I'm, I think I'm almost through the book of Revelations, the book of Revelations. So understand that God is with you. Understand that, uh, uh, that, that if you don't move in faith, if you don't understand that God is with you, that your prayers, right, that you can't operate in faith because you don't really recognize the fact or you don't believe the fact that God has heard your prayers. And what, as a, as a body of believers, we need to understand is that prayer is a powerful thing, right? And so how many of us would, uh, would come in and, uh, somebody is sitting at our table, and uh, we begin to communicate, uh, we begin to talk to them, begin to yell at them, begin to scream at them, begin to holler at them like they're in the other room. But the reality is, is that they are, that, that the, the person is right there before us. He's right there in the room with us. And what I want you to know is that God is right there with you also. So what, what do I want you to do? What I want you to do, I want you to acknowledge the fact, I'll uh, begin to understand, shift your thinking, shift your mind to begin to understand the fact. Can you, can you turn to 2 Corinthians? Now, I don't have this in my notes. 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, I think it's the 10th chapter. And this is probably a f familiar scripture to most of you. 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter.
in verse number uh, verse number four. Listen to what it says. Second Corinthians, the tenth chapter, verse number four. It says, uh, verse number three. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. In other words, the the way that we operate is not in a fleshly manner. We don't believe as a body of believers that 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 getting spiritual things accomplished can be done by natural means. He says, so though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, they're not fleshly, right? They can't be, you can't fill them with your hands, right? But they are mighty in God to the pulling down of stronghold. And then notice what he says in verse number five, casting down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, right? So what we find now is, is that what, what happens is that the way that we've been doing things and the way that we've been understanding things sometimes has, has been put in our minds and we begin to believe it. And whether you, whether you, whether you recognize this or not, it becomes a stronghold in our life because we believe a particular thing. We believe that when I pray, that my prayers have to leave here, go all the way into heaven, and I don't know whether God heard my prayers or not. See, that, 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 that thinking has to begin to come down, and you've got to recognize that God is with you. So what do I want you to do? I want you to acknowledge the fact that God is right there before you. Revelations 3.20 says this, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any of you hear my voice and open the door, I'll come in and I will eat with you and you with me. And so I said that because this scripture right here is not a scripture that is written for the world. This is a scripture that is written for the church and the body of Christ. And so what I want you to do is I want you to begin to acknowledge the fact that God is right there. When you go in your prayer room, you begin to pray, you need to understand that God is right there in your prayer room, that he is right there in the midst of you. He's not somewhere all far off. And what we said on last week was sometimes we don't sense he's there. Sometimes our flesh doesn't perceive that he's there. And so what we have to do is we go through a, uh, you know, we go through, you know, a uh, time of worship and then, you know, uh, you know, we, we hallelujah for a little while. And then all of a sudden we say, oh my God, you know what? The Lord is in this place. Kind of like what Jacob did in that beginning scripture is that surely the Lord was in this place and I did not perceive it. And so what happens is uh, many times is that our perception, right? Our perception catches up with the reality that he is actually right there in the midst of us. And what, what, what I want you to understand is whether you feel it or not, whether you sense it or not, God is right there. All right? So you got to acknowledge. Number two, number two. Listen to what it says in, uh, num in, in Luke, cha Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, verse number 39. It says, uh, talking about Mary and Martha, right? And it says in Luke chapter 10, verse number 39, she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparation that had, been, that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, uh, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work? Tell her to help me. And Jesus says to her, Martha, Martha, you are cumbered. You are worried. You are engulfed with so many things, right? But Mary has chosen the best part. What part was that? That was the part that she, was, she recognized that he was there in her house. She said, I'm, if he is here in my house, I'm going to sit here before him and I'm going to listen to what it is that he has to say. Can I tell you, 
He is at your house. He is at your house. Now, when you get ready to go into your prayer time, he is at your house. When you get ready to go pray, can I tell you, if you listen at what he says, what he says, it will shift and change your life. He is there to hear you and he is there to speak to you. So sit in his presence. So the first one was acknowledge him, acknowledge him. You got to acknowledge the fact that he's there. Number two, you got to sit in his presence, sit in his presence. Number three is this, and it's a hindrance to prayer, is that you got to not regard your, 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 uh, what's the word I want to use? You got to not regard your, your, your fleshly failures. That you got to, you got to, you got to put those fleshly failures on the back door. And so what happens many times is because people miss God or they sin or they slip up or whatever it is that they do. They feel like that they are not worthy to come before the presence of God. And the apostle Paul says uh, that, uh, that we can boldly come to the throne of grace, but we can find help and obtain mercy in our time of need. So what I'm telling you is that don't allow what you've done, your mishaps, your mess up, your sin, don't allow that to stop you from getting into the presence of the Lord or recognizing that God is right there before you. So in Luke 19, uh, uh, Zacchaeus was up in a tree. Jesus walks by. He, he tells Zacchaeus, he says, Zacchaeus, listen, come down. I've got to abide at your house today. And so Jesus and Zacchaeus begin to walk over to the house. They get to Zacchaeus' house. They're in that fellowshipping. They're having a good time. They're eating. They're drinking. They're just having a good time fellowshipping. And then all the people in Luke 19, verse number 7, listen to what they say. All the people saw that this, that, that this, and all people saw this and began to mutter, he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. And so what I want you to understand is this, is that if you invite Jesus to come on in, right? If you recognize that he is there with you, that it does not matter your condition, that, that, that you need to repent from whatever it is that you've done, right? Uh, the scripture says, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. No, I'm not telling you that, that, that you should just, you know, just, just walk in a place of the, a sinful lifestyle. All I'm saying is this. All I'm saying is that, listen, don't let what you've done keep you out of the presence of the Lord. He is right there with you. And Zacchaeus sees Jesus. He recognizes that Jesus is the answer to all of his problems. And what does he do? He invites Jesus into his house. And the people are complaining about the fact that this is a sinner. But guess what? All God wants to be is in his presence. And so you need to acknowledge him. You need to sit there in his presence. And then you need to, uh, you need to not allow your sins to keep you from the presence of the Lord. Thank you so much. Back into the hand of uh, Prophetess Carla. Prophetess, uh, Pastor Dunn, would you go ahead and pray for us before you uh, go off? Would you go ahead and pray? Sure, sure. Come, come on, bow your heads with me just for a few minutes and let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight for the revelation of your word. We thank you that even tonight, God, that you spoke to us in clarity. Many of us have struggled sometimes in our prayer and the way that we've come before you and even recognizing the reality of the fact that you are right there with us. And so tonight, God, as we come to you tonight, we want you to begin to allow your uh, allow your presence to become real to us, that God, that we would begin to live like you're alive. Many of us, many of us on a day by day basis, think that, that you're away from us somewhere in heaven. And God, we sometimes even treat you like you are not living, that you are not 
present, that you're that the reality of your life is not manifesting in the earth even now. But God, tonight, we come before you, we come before you with a new understanding, with the understanding that your presence is there with us, and that when we pray, when we open our mouths, that you're there with us. And God, we thank you tonight that as, uh, that as we begin to pray before you, we thank you that, that, uh, that those that have heard tonight will have the boldness to begin to pray even outlandish things, God, that they'll begin to step out into the area of faith and you will begin to hear their prayers and God, that because of that, uh, their lives will be changed, that the prayers of faith shall save the sick, that God, that your people will lay before you in prayer and lives will be changed. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. Man. Pastor Man, I, we, we did have a, a question. A question came up. And if you all have questions, if you would go ahead and put those in the chat. And the question was if um, so many times people feel that once they mess up, that they run from prayer and they, you know, they let their guilt get in the way. What do you what is your suggestion? How how do you how would they handle that? Well, see, and that 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 part right there is a um I said condemnation is a is a is a uh, what is, let me see what the scripture says in um, uh, let me see Romans uh, is it Romans eight I think it is let me check just to make sure I hope it's Romans eight oh yeah it is it says this there is now therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. And so what happens a lot of times is that, uh, is that our flesh begins to speak to us and begins to tell us things like, oh, you're not worried, worthy to go into the presence of the Lord. So the first thing that I would say to, this, uh, to that question is understand that this uh, this opposition to you getting into the presence of the Lord is actually proceeding from a fleshly place. It's not coming from a spiritual place. And so you need to understand that God sent his son that your sins can be forgiven. And there's one scripture, I've always loved this scripture. It says this, it says that God has taken care of your past sins. He's taking care of your sins right now. And guess what? He'll take care of your sins in the future. And so what you need to know is that you can even in the condition that you're in, receive forgiveness for your sin and go into the presence of the Lord, no matter what it is that you've done. So you need to understand that that is a, that's a fleshly thing that's trying to, that's trying to keep you out of the presence of the Lord. Thank you for that, Pastor Don. Does anybody else have any questions? If you do, you can go ahead and put those in the chat as we transition into uh, the next part of our uh, class tonight. Uh, Facebook friends, I really appreciate you being on. Remember Facebook that on this Saturday, we will be having the School of Dreams with Elder Cheryl Singletary. You can register for that. I, if you go uh, onto my page, you will find that link. We are, we'll we will be glad and excited to have you on. If you are a dreamer, if you just have an interest in dreaming. She awesome. She awesome. She's awesome. <laughs> you need to join that class because Elder Cheryl is awesome and her insight is amazing. And you, you will learn just so much. And because, you know, when we dream, we also need to interpret. And she's going to be teaching on how, you know, some how you interpret and the meaning of that. Um, so I just wanted to invite you, Facebook, and those of you that are on Zoom tonight that have not registered, to go ahead, go ahead and register. So, Facebook friends, we are going to log off right now because we are going into our prayer rooms and prayer times, but we appreciate you being on. I appreciate each of you that have uh, been with us during the School of Prayer. Next week is our last week. 
um, of doing this. Uh, our Summer Academy is ending on next Thursday. It has been amazing. The Lord has really blessed us. I appreciate your generosity. I, I appreciate your commitment. I appreciate you for just being a part of our school, our Summer Academy. This was my first time doing it, and it has been uh, a success, and so I really appreciate that. So, Facebook friends, we will see you next time. Uh, so thank you all for being on, those of you that are in Zoom. Uh, uh, Trish, if you are on, you can go ahead and do the offering. All right. Um, hello, everyone. I'm so glad everyone has been able to join us these past few weeks for the in prayer and learning about prayer. Um, and for the past few weeks, we've been talking about offering and really focusing on the scripture in 2 Corinthians 9 and 7 that talks about being a cheerful giver and how the Lord loves uh, to for us to give and, and, and give because we have a desire to give and give from our heart. And um, today, I just wanted to take a few minutes to talk about um, giving from your heart is applying to the offering that we give and that offering and tithes are definitely two different things and offering is what you give in addition to tithe and um you that is where you have to seek the lord to really hear from the lord and see what he has for you to give so um as i was getting ready for tonight's offering um the Lord reminded me of the scripture in Matthew 6 and 21, where it says, for where your treasure is, there also is where your heart is. And I think even when it comes to giving, um, it, when we seek the Lord and we trust him to give what he uh, tells us to give in, in a form of offering that um, we are showing that we put our treasure in the Lord and we put our trust in the Lord. So tonight's offering, we really want to sow into the man of God. We want to sow into Pastor Don tonight and be a blessing unto him. So I pray that each and every one of you will uh, uh, do what the Lord asked you to do tonight and sow into the man of God if he, as he's poured out to us the last few weeks and helped us uh, be activated and reactivated in the area of prayer and uh, i know we still have one more class but we believe that the lord is wanting us to sow a seed into pastor don tonight so um tonight's offering is going to be a Hey, Prophetess Carla, you are, you are, uh, your mic is off. <laughs> thank you, Pastor Don. Um, thank you all for being patient. So I did put the cash app in. It's uh, cash, uh, the dollar sign, Rivers of Mercy. So if you don't mind tonight, just sowing into the man of God, he has given up his time over the last couple of weeks. And so he it would be greatly appreciated. And so we would appreciate that. And as he's doing that, I'm going to prepare our rooms, our prayer rooms tonight. He will, he may be on with us next week, but what we're going to do next week, we're going to be doing some prayer and prophesying next week. So make sure that you come back and join us on next week. So I, as you're doing that, as you're giving, I am going to set up our rooms tonight. And just as a reminder, if it is at all possible, we are asking that once you go into the rooms that you do turn your videos on, it just makes it a little bit more personable. Also remember that this is the school of prayer. So we are, this is an op our opportunity to pray for one another uh, and to get some prayer from each other as well. So this is not, we're in, in during this time, we're not necessarily prophesying, we are praying. So I want you to remember that. Also, since I said that, on August 22nd, we will be having the school, uh, the school of the prophets 
So I will be getting that link out and getting that information so that you can sign up. So, so those of you uh, that, had, that have enjoyed all of our classes, I will be doing School of the Prophets again on August 22nd. You will be able to sign up for that. And I, I look forward to having you. Just remember tonight, though, to follow the leading of your leader. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do the rooms. And if team leads, if you would stay in for just one minute i would appreciate that so let's see i am creating rooms i am opening rooms so you all can go ahead and go into your rooms while i get uh, the leaders in Cheryl's good. Shantae. Shantae, are you able to do it? Let me see. Yes, ma'am. I couldn't get off the mute thing. Yes. Okay, good. Okay, okay. So just sit tight. I'm going to put you in a room. Oh, I need to move. So Shantae is good. Cheryl, you are good. You can go into a room. You're good. Your room is good. Shantae, your room is good. Trisha, you still Father in? Carla, can you send me like the room if I, when I was trying to hit unmute, I hit cancel. Can you send it back to me so I can join? Yes, I think so. I want to move you. To, I don't want to move you. I want you to stay in there. Shantae, I'm going to move you, but don't move, okay? Just sit, because I'm going to have to move okay. you to bring you back. Okay. All right, you know what, Shantae, just go ahead and go into... Wow, that job was with them last time. Uh, okay, you can go. Trish, did, did Trish leave? It didn't pop up yet, Prophetess. It didn't pop up? No, ma'am. Because it, it says Shantae. Initially, do I hit the one up here? It said join breakout room, and it has little four boxes in a circle. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Trisha, you got a baby go in one? Shantae. Um. I'm I'm gonna try. I keep getting kicked out on my work computer. So and my other computer crashed. Really? Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Where are you? Okay, I don't know where you went. Oh, did I go down again? No, it's not you, it's me. I just need to figure out where to put you. So Cheryl has somebody. I don't see okay, it says unassigned. Okay. Assigned to room. Um uh, One. Okay, you going to room one. Okay. You know what? So you can you can add it now. Okay. So Cheryl's right there. Shantae's right there. Trish is right there. Okay, and I'll go into room. Okay, Trish, 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 Trish. Denise, are you trying to uh, join the room?
So um, we, we're going to do that same exercise tonight um, and pray for one another. So we're just going to kind of do a round robin thing since there's five of us in here. We'll, um, each of us will pray for one other person that's in the group. Um, and if I happen to get kicked out, if uh, uh, Denise, if you'll pick up and take the lead, and then if Denise also gets kicked out, um, Amina, if you'll just jump in and take the lead, and I'm just kind of calling names as the pictures are across the top of my screen. Because one thing we're not going to do is let uh, technology or storms or even the devil stop us from getting the prayers up to heaven. So, um, and just for anyone who hasn't been in a group with me before, I'm Minister Trish. Uh, I'm, I'm with Lions Roar, and I work with Prophetess Carla uh, in, in Lions Roar Ministries. So, um, I'm, I'm here in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and if you'll just take a minute to introduce yourself, um, and then we'll go through and assign prayer partners to pray for one another tonight. Um, so, Margo, if you'll go next. Are you still there, Margo? Yes, I'm still. I'm still you're still here. You want me to pray now? Or just you introduce yourself. All uh, right. I'm Margo. Um, <laughs> well, and where are you from? <laughs> I'm from, I'm, well, I'm originally from Norfolk, Virginia, but I am currently residing in Swanee, Georgia. I've been here since 2006. Okay. And then, my see, prayer uh, point. If you'll go ahead and give your prayer point, yes. Um, I just, I'm asking for spiritual wisdom and discernment in this hour. Okay.
ke to raba she to rebe ke no raba she to raba ke ro raba she to raba ke ne rebe she to raba ka na raba she to raba so as you all are coming back in if you don't mind just um praying in the holy spirit for just a moment just praying the holy spirit as we're coming in I want you to pray in the Holy Ghost for just one minute. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. Koraba shero raba kanere re be shoto raba keno raba sheto raba kero raba shedo raba kedo raba sheto raba. Just lift your hands and begin to. I want you to kore be koraba sheto raba kero raba sheto re be koraba sheto re be kore be koraba kanore be koraba 